Today marks six months since Russia invaded Ukraine. It's also Ukraine's Independence Day. No marches or parades are planned because of security issues. U.S. officials are warning Americans still in Ukraine to leave the country, fearing Russia is about to intensify its attacks. Ukraine's president issuing a warning today while addressing the U.N. Security Council. And more help is on the way from the U.S., with President Biden just announcing he is sending $3 billion worth of weapons and equipment to Ukraine, the largest package yet. Joining me now is Leon Panetta, former Secretary of Defense and former CIA Director, and Chuck Hagel, former Defense Secretary, former Republican Senator from Nebraska, and the Chair of the Council on Criminal Justice, Veterans Justice Commission. Welcome both. Thank you very much. We're going to talk about your, your commission and your new study, uh, a really important subject in just a moment. I wanted to start with Ukraine on this six-month anniversary. It's Independence Day. There are fears of retaliation for the apparent bombing that killed one of Vladimir Putin's uh, closest, closest political allies, uh, the daughter, the 29-year-old daughter the other day, as well as the anniversary, and the fears of something terrible happening at, at the Zaporizhia nuclear plant. Uh, Secretary Panetta, first to you. Um, this six months in, where do you, how do you assess how Ukraine is doing? Uh, and whether they can withstand the continuous onslaught here and what appears to be a frozen conflict? Well, I, I don't think there's any question that uh, the Ukrainians have a lot to celebrate uh, on Independence Day. Uh, they remain uh, an independent uh, democracy. Uh, they basically uh, were able to stop a Russian invasion of their country. Uh, they survived a brutal siege, a war in which uh, Russia was attacking uh, innocent uh, men, women, and children and brutalizing that country, but they survived it. Uh, and now they're holding their own on a war of attrition, which is going on now. So I think, uh, I think most importantly, they are an independent democracy uh, free of Russian domination, and that's a lot to celebrate. And Secretary Hegel, uh, as well as they are doing, uh, there doesn't seem to be any stage yet where either side is willing to negotiate. Uh, the Ukrainians certainly not, as long as Russia is still on the attack. Russia doesn't seem, Russia doesn't seem at all serious about negotiating. Um, how do we get to a stage where there will be some kind of, you know, settlement at the bargaining table? Well, uh, first of all, I agree with what Leon said and his analysis. Uh, as to your question, uh, I, I think it's a matter of uh, not just sustaining um, what the brave Ukrainians have done and the support that they've been given from the United States and Western allies, but uh, looking ahead as to uh, what happens next. They need more flexibility in their weaponry, more maneuverability. Uh, more capability. And the United States and the NATO allies are providing that. I mean, the new weapons sh shipments announced here this week by the Biden administration reflect that. But it's more than that. It's, uh, it, it's planning. It's intelligence. Uh, it's getting underneath, for example, what happened in Crimea uh, here a few days ago and before that. Um, you're seeing the, uh, the creative Ukrainian approach to this as a as a great nation defending its country, defending its future, defending its past, uh, and, and you can't invent that. You, you can't just find that off the shelf somewhere with sophisticated weaponry. All of that has to blend together, and, and I think uh, what we're seeing, at least after the first six months, that that is happening. And I think we always have to ask the. The question, what happens next? I don't know what happens next, how long this goes, when it ends, how it ends, where it ends. But uh, I do know this. This is this is probably a long-term uh, effort. And as much flexibility as the Ukrainians can build in uh, to their approach and, and our assistance and continued assistance, like we have been assisting, uh, I think that's the key to this. But it's, uh, it's a pretty re remarkable as Leon said, pretty remarkable what the Ukrainians have achieved in the last six months. And Secretary Panetta, turning to Syria briefly, the U.S. conducted precision airstrikes in Syria against Iran-backed groups, just as the U.S. is now deliberating on whether to respond, how to respond to 
the Iranian latest offer on the Iranian uh, nuclear JCPOA, the nuclear agreement, reviving that. They seem to be on different, on separate tracks. The U.S. seems willing to go after Iran militarily when it deems it necessary, uh, despite hopes to try to get back into the nuclear deal. Is it possible to keep these things uh, apart? Well, I have to tell you that, uh, and, and Chuck knows this well, uh, the Department of Defense, uh, when, when our troops are attacked, uh, we have to respond. Uh, and on August 15th, uh, Iranian uh, drones attacked our forces in Syria. Uh, fortunately, no one was hurt. But because of that attack, I think the president, uh, President Biden, made the right decision uh, to basically go at those that were responsible. And those who are responsible are militias that are supported by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. Uh, so I think this was the right response at the right time. And I also uh, want to talk, of course, about your very important work on this veterans issue. Uh, Secretary Hagel, a preliminary report released by your Council on Criminal Justice uh, found that about a third of veterans say that they have been arrested at least once. You're going to chair this new commission, and Secretary Panetta is serving on your panel. Why are veterans being arrested and incarcerated at a higher rate than uh, non-military uh, people in the population? Well, yeah, that question is a question that uh, uh, we are going to try and, and find out. This 15-member commission, uh, 15 members uh, represented by all facets of this, the Judiciary, the Veterans Administration, DOD, we have two former service members who have been incarcerated, uh, find out why this is happening. We have over 180,000 veterans in prison today uh, in jails all over this country. Uh, this just didn't start. I mean, we can go back years and years and go back to the time I was in Vietnam with my brother, Tom, in 1968. What I saw and he saw after that, I mean, how veterans tried to adjust, they had a lot of problems. The last 20 years where America has had its longest wars, 20-year wars, Afghanistan and Iraq, we've seen these young men and women redeploy, redeploy, redeploy. Uh, that takes a toll uh, on anybody. I don't care how damn strong you are. Uh, it takes a toll. And Leon knows this. And there are going to be breakdowns, mental breakdowns. And so what we want to do in this commission is get into this with deep research. Let's see how we can help the veteran as that veteran is transitioning out of DOD. Help through the courts, police departments, the VA, DOD, everybody who has a hand in this. We're going to be making recommendations over the next two years to all these bodies um, based on intense, real research. Uh, we can't have this. Uh, it is this disgrace when you have these men and women spend so many years in uniform and then come back and somehow they slip uh, between the cracks. Uh, we, we don't have all the answers, but we're going to find out the answers. And I think America deserves it, those answers as well. One last point here. Um, again, as Leon knows so well, we've got a, a real recruitment and retention problem in the armed forces today. I mean, Army's recruitment uh, issues are big. Other services as well. And th this affects recruitment too. Potential young men and women uh, good, smart, dedicated, committed as to how they see life in the military and how you transition out. So it's it's all of that together is what we're going to be looking at. And I very much appreciate Leon's involvement and all the people on the, the commission because they're all first rate and dedicated to this. Well, you know, it's so important. And, you know, you, your service, your brother Tom's in Vietnam, uh, Secretary Panetta, your service, your son's service. Uh, the, the strains on these these veterans coming back, you know, how are we failing them in terms of adjustment and health um, in cases of drug abuse, trauma, PTSD, um, housing assistance, education? It's all of that, right? Right. Absolutely. It is all of that. Yeah. And Secretary no, Panetta? Uh, there's, a, there's a code that uh, I think both uh, Chuck and I know from uh, the Department of Defense, which is, uh, yeah, you never leave anybody behind uh, in the military. Never leave anyone behind. And the fact that uh, we have this huge number, over 180,000, that are presently in federal and state prisons, uh, tells us that uh, 
that we are leaving them behind uh, because of P PTSD, traumatic brain in injury, uh, mental problems, uh, substance abuse problems, all of the things that are impacting uh, and creating this horrible problem that uh, the commission is going to look at. We, this is an area where, frankly, the country needs to respond because these are patriots. They tried to fight for our country, uh, and now they're in deep trouble, and we've got to help them. Well, Leon Panetta, Chuck Hagel, it's so good to see you again. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Of course, thanks for being with Thank us today. Thank you. Thank you.